Hey there, my fellow lunatics, and welcome to Dakin's Madhouse. All right, what have we got today? Well, today I wanted to give you all a beginner's guide to character build progression. Corekeeper has tons of build options. I mean, I, I've listed several on my channel before, but definitely not all of them. And I will undoubtedly showcase many more builds as time goes on. But the game does have a bit of a linear progression at the beginning before it opens up into the wide variety of options that we see at the end game. When you first get started, you need a starter build. A basic wood armor set is really all that you need to get started. It's strong enough to protect you against anything the dirt biome can throw at you, and it is simple to craft as well as to maintain. If you feel like upgrading to copper, you can, but honestly, it's not really necessary unless you just find yourself struggling a little bit. Basic weapons are all that you're going to need as well. A copper sword or a wooden bow will work great. When it comes to necklaces and rings, just wear whatever you find at this point. I mean, I didn't even include any in the build. You don't need rings or necklaces this early in the game. This basic wooden build will get you through the first two boss fights as well, easily allowing you to take down Glurch and Gorm. So, you've beaten two, maybe even all three of the initial bosses. You're ready to dominate the inner core and start exploring beyond the Great Wall. At this point, you'll want our next build. Our next build is Iron. If you want to make bronze armor, you can, but with how easy it is to get iron in the early game, I recommend skipping the bronze and going straight from wood to iron. You will find iron in the Forgotten Ruins, also known as the Stone Biome. Melee users in this build will want to use the iron sword with a wooden shield. Ranged combatants will want either an iron bow or the fireball staff. You'll get the fireball stabs by killing the caveling shamans. I prefer the blue leather tome for my offhand, though it can be a challenge to get early in the game. You get the blue leather tome by killing Malagaz. He's an optional boss in the Forgotten Ruins. Check out my beginner's guide to Malagaz for strategies on how to beat him. Your accessory options will vary depending on whether you are ranged or melee. If you're ranged, I recommend the gold crystal rings and melee should pretty much just use rings of rock and stone. If your mining skill is high enough, you'll be able to add the mining bonuses from these rings to your melee damage. You could theoretically also use the clot ring, which comes off of the hive mother if you've defeated her by this point. When it comes to necklaces, both ranged and melee benefit from the gold crystal necklace, but the copper cross necklace is excellent for either as well. All of these accessories, except for rock and stone rings, are craftable at the jewelry workbench. The rock and stone rings you're just going to find as you mine. Once the Great Wall goes down, you gain access to three new biomes. Azios' Wilderness, the Sunken Sea, and the Desert of Beginnings. Azios' Wilderness is the first zone that you're going to want to explore. It's a lush and vibrant biome, and the walls are destructible to an iron pickaxe. Your tier 2 will get you started in the wilderness, but you're going to want to upgrade quickly to survive the mold dungeons and to really defeat the two bosses in this zone. In this build, we have a scarlet armor set with a scarlet sword for melee, though the scarlet dagger is also very good. And if you are ranged, I recommend the blowpipe. The blowpipe you're going to find in the mold dungeons, so it may take a while for you to get that. Unfortunately for melee, the wooden shield still reigns supreme until you can kill the slime boss within the wilderness, Morpha. Once you beat that boss, you get access to the Toxic Defender. The blue leather tome from Malagaz is still the best ranged offhand at this stage as well. 
and your big upgrades come from your accessories. By this point, you should have a wood farm, which means you will also have 100 crafting skill. If you need it, check out my beginner's guide to crafting for tips on how to max out your crafting skill quickly with a wood farm. With 100 crafting, you'll be making polished jewelry at the jewelry workbench. The polished copper cross necklace is an excellent necklace for ranged or melee, and the polished gold crystal rings are excellent for ranged. Melee users can craft the polished swift ring for a boost to their melee attack speed, or use the clot ring which drops off the hive mother for life on melee hit. Whichever rings you prefer. This build will get you through most, if not all, of Azios' wilderness. You can also start exploring the Sunken Sea with this build if you want. Once you get into the wilderness, your options open up. You could stick with the Scarlet set, but there are other options. A dodge set becomes viable at this point, especially once you start exploring the Sunken Sea. There are a lot of accessories that give you a dodge boost. Check out my dodge build video for all the details on how to get a dodge set. You also can put together a poison build at this stage of the game. Both the poison and the dodge builds are the kind of build that you'd need to put together as you explore the wilderness and start exploring the sunken sea. I also have videos detailing how to put together a poison build, so be sure to check that out too. So this build deserves more of an honorable mention. Uh, the Slime King crown and the royal gel can be worn to make the crabs and the sea tentacles in the Sunken Sea friendly to you. This will make exploring the Sunken Sea much easier. So much easier. You get both of these items as guaranteed drops off of the Slime King. That's an optional boss that you can fight when you're in and about your scarlet gear or better. You can pull it off in the iron if you know if you got the skills. Being able to explore the sunken sea without getting constantly attacked will make it a lot easier to find a lot of those dodge build items and other um, accessories that you will need to be able to put those mid game builds together properly. At this point, once you're able to survive and explore the sunken sea, your build options explode open. There's really no linear progression anymore. If you get your dodge set to 90%, then you can explore the Sunken Sea and the Desert of Beginnings with no problems. The Poison build can handle Ra Kar, boss of the desert, and if you kill him, you get the Scarab Armor. And Scarab Armor is used in crit and thorn builds. There's also burn damage builds that you can get once you defeat Igneous. All of these builds become viable at this point. Really, you just need to start exploring, check out all my build videos for inspiration, and then put together the build that works best for you and for your playstyle. And I think that just about wraps it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and until next time, Stay crazy.